Dr. Peter Glidden here, your steadfast advocate for health. Thanks for tuning in again. Another edition of Medical Perspective. You know, the easiest place to hide something is in plain sight. The opioid epidemic by the numbers, not pretty. 42,249 people died from overdosing on opioids in 2016. 42,948,000 died from heroin or people who used heroin. 2.1 million people had an opioid use disorder in 2016. Uh, 2.1 million people uh, misused prescription opioids for the first time. Deaths attributed to overdosing on commonly prescribed opioids, 17,087. Deaths attributed to overdosing on synthetic opioids other than methadone, 19,000. Deaths attributed to overdosing on heroin, 15,000. So opioids kill more people than heroin does. Let me say this again. Opioids kill more people than heroin does, and it's a problem, and everybody knows that it's a problem. But nobody asks, well, what's the root cause of the problem? Because this is how it goes with all things medical. There is an assumption here. There is a built-in a priori prejudicial assumption, which is incorrect, which is feeding all of this doom and gloom and horrible health outcomes throughout not only the U.S., but the world, industrialized nations of the world over. The presumption is that we have the best medical care that money can buy, but we don't. We exist in a medical monopoly, and the MDs and the pharmaceutical industry practicing and espousing allopathic reductionistic medicine is the only medical show in town and it's been the only medical show in town for 108 years now in the United States. We haven't had a free medical market here. The only medicine practiced in your hospital is MD directed medicine. The only medicine your insurance pays for by and large MD directed medicine. The only medicine they make TV shows about MD directed medicine. The only medicine they do research on at your local university, MD-directed medicine, and so forth and so on. You don't have naturopathic doctors or homeopathic doctors or Ayurvedic practitioners, acupuncturists practicing medicine at your hospital. They certainly don't do uh, give medical research dollars to those medical professions. And, you know, we've been socialized, for lack of a better word, into believing that if the MD can't figure it out, then it's he can't figure it out because the MD owns the secret decoder ring to all things medical, and that's just not true. So, MD-directed medical treatments, and look, again, this is not a diatribe against MD-directed medicine. It's not. It's just a, let's pull back the curtains and see what's going on. Medical doctors, bless their hearts, don't practice medicine. They practice allopathic medicine. I don't practice medicine. I practice naturopathic medicine. There's no such thing as the practice of medicine. Underneath the distinction of medicine, there are many different disciplines, just like there are many different types of dogs, right? You know, if somebody came up to you and said, the only real dog is a German Shepherd, and every other dog is an alternative dog, you'd think they were crazy. But that's the story that you've been told when it comes to medicine. The only real medicine is MD-directed allopathic pharmaceutical centrist medicine. All other types of medicine are alternative. Well, no, we're not. No, they're not. MD-directed medicine is really great for trauma care, surgery when it's necessary, a handful of infections. That's the wheelhouse of reductionistic allopathic MD-directed medicine. But for pain... It's a horrible system of medicine because your medical doctor practicing allopathic medicine is not trained to cure the condition. Listen, you know, again, let's just open the curtain and look into the room. Allopathic medicine is not concerned with finding a cure. Your, your medical doctor doesn't even know how to cure heartburn. They can manage it. They can't cure high blood pressure. They can't cure arthritis. They can manage it, and so forth and so on, right? They can't, they can't, they don't even attempt to cure these things. Not because they're bad people, but just because of their training. That's how they're trained. So somebody comes to a medical doctor and they're in pain. 
legitimately in pain. It's not they're not trying to milk the system. They're not trying to get drugs. They're in pain, legitimately for a reason. And the medical doctor, by virtue of their training and their understanding, which is short-sighted, quite frankly, of how the human body works, instead of attempting to get to the root cause of what's causing the pain and fix it, they just medicate the pain with, in this case, opioids. So they're managing the pain with opioids until the opioid prescription runs out because the medical doctor knows you're going to become addicted at some point in time, but they have to do something. They can't just send the patient home in pain. They have to do something, so they'll prescribe opioids to which the patient easily becomes addicted. And then when the prescription runs out, the patient has to find the opioid somewhere else. So they go to the black market. And then if they can't find the opioids, they start heroin because it's a kissing cousin. And it's going to fill the need, which is now a, 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 a biochemical addiction. It's an addiction. It's a chemical addiction. A chemical addiction like nicotine. It's caused by a, an abject failure across the board of conventional MD-directed medicine to be able to cure conditions that patients show up with that are in pain. They can't do it. So rather than, or in addition to, you know, having the government fund treatment centers to help people manage their addiction now, wouldn't it be better? Or wouldn't it be a smart idea to give patients in pain access to other types of medical treatment other than the ones that have failed them? It certainly would be. And inquiring minds want to know why doesn't that happen? It's because of follow the money, baby. You think that we, we so we haven't had a free medical market since 1912, I think, in this country. It's been MD-directed medicine all the time, right? And Congress, in 1912, gave the American Medical Association exclusive control over who could be called a doctor and who couldn't. Gave the MDs exclusive control. Well, you know, which is like giving uh, Hertz exclusive control over who can rent a car. You wouldn't be okay with that. Or giving McDonald's exclusive rights over who could sell hamburgers. You wouldn't be okay with that. But that is exactly what's happened with medicine, and you're okay with it because it happened before you were born and it's just normal and you've been educated to think that the MDs have this super educated intellectual purchase on the workings of the human body and they don't they have their own which is really good for certain things right thank God for Novocaine and the sterile technique and surgical procedures these things are remarkably effective but for pain management, for actually attempting to cure the cause of the pain, the medical, the MDs are lost. They're lost. But, you know, they're also closed-minded because that's the nature of their education. medical doctor isn't going to be open to a chiropractic treatment or a naturopathic treatment or any other type of treatment other than what they've been trained in. And so when their treatments fail... You know, they wash their hands and walk away because they did their best. So, what we need here is a free medical market. We need access to other methods of treatment. Naturopathic methods of treatment would be a good place to go if you're attempting to get on the other side of, for instance, an arthritic condition, which is causing you massive amounts of pain, fibromyalgia, causing massive amounts of pain or some undiagnosed complex regional pain syndrome which is fancy schmancy MD talk for this patient's in pain we have no idea what's causing it you need a different set of eyes you need a different perspective but I do not believe that this is ever going to happen in our lifetimes I do not believe that we're going to wake up and have equal access to naturopathic medicine. My profession is not even licensed in, in all 25 states yet. 
mean, I did eight years of medical school, right? I have a license to practice medicine, but I can only practice medicine in 24 states. Can you imagine that? That's the situation that we're up against. So we need different eyes on this problem. And that's what I've dedicated this part of my life to. I've, I have 29 years of clinical experience treating real patients with real illness with naturopathic therapeutics as a licensed naturopathic doctor. And my job now is to educate you about the simple steps often that you can take in order to get on the other side of a health issue, whatever it is. So if, you know, you've gone to the, you're in pain, you've gone to the MDs and they failed you, then you should access the information that I bring to the table because it's good, it's robust, it's science-based and clinically verified. It's not any nonsense flavor of the month, super duper botanical medicine discovered in the Amazon that's going to cure everything. That's nonsense. You need a science-based, clinically verified alternative. I hate to use that word, but there it is. So follow me. Your life very well may depend upon it. Facebook, YouTube, World Wide Web, Glidden.Healthcare. Instagram, at Glidden Healthcare. You see a pattern here? <laughs> Twitter, at Dr. Peter Glidden. Knowledge is power. Educate yourself about, here it comes again, alternatives to, to conventional medicine, which outside of the surgical theater and the emergency room theater is, is just a, it's a, it's a failed methodology. I am your steadfast advocate for health. Thanks for your time. God willing, in the creek don't rise, I'll see you around campus.